this is this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out. Blow it out. Cause he'll try. Don't let him. Nope. <laughs> Just keep shining, y'all. Shine for Jesus. Amen. That's what my wall says. See that? I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Jesus is the light. Yeah. Jesus is the light. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus is the light. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Yeah. Jesus is the light. <clears throat> what did Jesus say? You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. So keep shining. Oot. And shout, shout, I will clap, I will run around, and shout, shout, stomp your feet, clap your hands, and shout. <laughs> Oh, watch out for the darkness, y'all. You know what? Just shine a little bit of light and there won't be any darkness anymore. Right? Ta-da! And God said, let there be light. I have always seen the creation story as an allegory for what happens inside the human heart when we get saved. And the Bible says that he will take away our heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. And it's also like maybe a person's heart is black because there's darkness, but then God turns the light on and the blackness goes away and now there's light. I remember I, I have given my testimony a lot in churches and I would always explain it that it was like a light bulb went on when I was 14. I was in a worship service. We sang shout to the Lord and it's like a light bulb went on. You know, it's like there was darkness and then there was light. And hopefully you all have had that same experience where it's just like, wow, now I can see. You know, like I had been in church at that point for 14 years. Well, from a baby to 14. But I didn't fully see it, you know? I didn't fully see it. I didn't totally realize that God cared about my behavior. <laughs> I was kind of a crazy kid in junior high. How was I crazy? I did some shoplifting, I smoked, I drank. I tried a little bit of pot. I don't think it was real pot though. I think it was fake pot. <laughs> I had some boyfriends. I was a little bit of a crazy kid. But my excuse is my parents got divorced when I was like 10. So I think it was all just a cry for attention, you know? Anyways, but then uh, we moved when I was 14 and that helped a lot. It helps a lot to get away from your crazy friends. I had, I had lots of friends in junior high in Nebraska. Then we moved to California, and I had a whole new set of friends. I joined basketball, so my friends were, you know, the jocks, whatever. People who really had a, a goal, you know? So then I had my goal to play in the WNBA someday, <laughs> or to get at least get it, to get a sports scholarship, you know? And I got around my grandma, my mom's mom, more, and she would always tell me, you're special, God created you to do something that nobody else can do. And I guess that could be making these videos or the books that I wrote. You guys should all check out my books. Look up Lisa Bedrick books on Amazon and my blog and various poems that I've tried writing just for fun. I do have a couple books of poems. But anyways, but same for you. God has created you special and he has something for you to do that nobody else can do. There's a way that you can benefit the world that nobody else can do that. You know, everybody's unique. 
nobody is a carbon copy of anybody else we all have our own unique experiences you know and our own way that we can shine light into this dark world you know so shine your light shine your light make the darkness disappear and then that'll be great let's all make the world a better place for our children for our children's children amen god bless y'all god bless bye